Hey, what's going on everybody? Boylon here back for another video on Marvel Strike Force. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Incursion Raid, but we're going to be talking it in the context of why Skirmisher ISO is one of the most important and maybe underutilized ISOs in the game, especially when it comes to higher level rating. Now, this video is going to be, you know, in context of like Incursion 2.1+. You know, because some of you may have noticed that uh, depending on what lane you're running, that the resistance rates on enemies are so freaking high, right? And I think it's really important that people understand when to apply a skirmisher ISO to a certain character and when you should be doing that and to who. So we're going to be taking a look at each of the lanes and my recommendations of when you should be doing this and also just some general rating tips as well. So if you're ready to go, let's boil this down. Now, normally I do not use the playtest server to show this kind of stuff off. So that's what I am on right now. Uh, it's mostly because my current raid is like halfway through. So it's easy to show the nodes and things like that when it comes to the progression of Incursion 2. So you know that the first section has Mystic characters, right? And so we're all using Bifrost at this point. The irony is actually I could hypothetically use Mephisto on this account. But anyways, <laughs> uh, when it comes to using Bifrost characters, right? You know, like this is your lineup. now. One thing that I would say is that when you have them built up, I, I don't think that for the most part, the I, I think this team does actually have better focus than some of the other raid teams, believe it or not, even though that they're older. I think it's because with Loki here, he provides quite a bit of extra focus to this team. Now, one thing that I have experimented with is utilizing Beta Ray Bill as a skirmisher. The reason for this is that when I use my normal team, like outside the outside the playtest account, you know, I actually have a hard time landing my stun on 2.2. I would imagine it's even harder on 2.3. So I feel like the only characters that are like probably reliably doing what they need to do, I would say is Sylvie and Vol. I actually run Vol as a raider on my main account and on 2.2, I typically do not have a problem landing my ability block on the special. And I want to show you at least in the beginning, you know, where this is most important. So this is the start of the node here, right? This is node number one. And you go with Sylvie, you do the ultimate and you do all that in the turn bar rewind and whatnot. Now for number two, I actually just use Loki's mind control here on Spider-Man big time. He's a bit of a problem here, right? Like I, this is basically how you would line up the node. Now with, with Vol, you want to do the special right down the middle on Rogue because it hits all the characters, including Spider-Man big time and Morgan Le Fay. Now this is 2.3. I run on 2.2. And I've never had a problem landing the ability block on most of these characters. However, I would not be surprised on 2.3 if it resists on some. But it did land on everyone, including Morgan Le Fay. So that's great because she doesn't have defense up, I guess, on this one. And this is pretty much this, this is node number one. Like that's that's 90 percent of node number one is making sure you get that. I have tried to use Beta Ray Bill's special and stunning certain other characters in it. It works to a very varying degrees. Like I don't do this on turn number one. I always go with the alt first anyways. It just made me wonder that when it comes to clearing buffs or landing that stun, I have issues in that and other nodes, but maybe it's because I haven't taken my characters to level 100 on my main account. So maybe that's what I'm missing. But otherwise, you know, this nodes, I'm surprised Sylvie took that much damage. Anyways, I'm not here to play through the whole node. I just want to kind of let you know, like, will I land this actually the stun? No, I didn't. So there's some some characters just have really insane resistances, right? Like Morgan Le Fay is one of those characters in almost every other raid node, depending on what team you're using, that just has an insane amount of resistance. Anyways, I'm not going to play through this entire node. I just wanted to kind of share that with you. And so when it comes to the rest of the Bifrost lane, one thing that I do want to point out, of course, is that when you get to the boss node, no surprise that there's, there's certain characters that are just really, really resistant, namely uh, Nova for sure because of his charges, right? And then once again, you have another Morgan Le Fay. And actually, even the Eternals on this node, the Icarus and the Cersei, are fairly resistant, you know, probably even more so in 2.3. So that's why it's just really important to maximize your focus. And I think certain characters, maybe more so in other uh, teams than the Bifrost team, it's really important to have specific characters as skirmishers as you go up in the difficulties, because unless you're running like three diamond on everyone, you know, obviously your focus is going to need a little bit of a bump. When you're dealing with some of these difficulties and you know i hope things i i guess they're probably not going to improve when we get incursion raid three 
I just feel like this is one of the biggest issues, more so than their damage. It's not necessarily how much damage they do to you. It's just the fact that you know when you when you have a debuff heavy team and you have issues landing them. And I think really the only recourse at that point is using a skirmisher ISO. Anyways, let's talk about the uh, tech section here. Now, this is with Pegasus, right? And I want to show you, if I can, my Pegasus roster. All right. And so this is my actual Pegasus team. This is my real my real account Pegasus team here. And I do run Ironheart as a skirmisher. Now, I don't really have that much of an issue with some of the other characters or their debuffs are not as necessary because I think a lot of them actually do some of the same debuffs as well outside of Darkhawk's, I think, offense down on his basic. But a lot of them do variations of slow defense down, that kind of thing. So even if one person fails, someone else is going to get it, I think. But for Ironheart specifically, there's two reasons why I really want her to have a Skirmisher ISO. She should probably bump her up to Skirmisher 5, actually, at some point. Is the special, which you're going to use a lot, but this applies trauma to primary and adjacent targets, but also applies slow to all enemies. Like if you guys remember how this node plays out, especially node one to start, like some of these things are just really, really important. You get the defense down for two turns to adjacent. So you're getting defense down, slow to all enemies, and then trauma to uh, primary and adjacent targets. All of these are really, really important debuffs that I just want to, you know, have as many land as possible. And then with the ultimate, you know, you're applying not only slow to every enemy as well, AOE, Again, again, more more ways to add these debuffs in, uh, but also you're going to be applying stun to the primary target and an additional random enemy that doesn't have stun. So I want to make sure that these land. Now, some of these do have extra focus. Like, for example, uh, this does gain 50 percent extra focus for each enemy with a vulnerable. But for the special, I don't believe it doesn't have that. And I've actually had times where, yes, the AOE slow does get resisted and it makes a pretty big difference from time to time. You know, if you don't have if it misses and it gets resisted because that's it slows a really important debuff to have. So that's why I just want to make sure that she's always applying this. And I don't know why it still resists at the 2.2 level. I would imagine it's even worse at 2.3. As far as the other characters go, I, I think it's fine to keep them as Raider just because I don't think that they're the debuffs that they put out. I don't think it is as debilitating if you don't land it. I mean, Darkhawk, like I said, does does an offense down for two turns on his basic, which hits a bunch of targets as well. But a lot of these other things are just kind of speed bar related. This the special, I mean, disrupt and defense down. That's kind of important too. But a lot of other characters do defense down. Kestrel does a lot of defense down, so it's not as big of a deal in my opinion if that doesn't land. So a lot of this just varies depending on how high you're built them. Obviously, I don't have level 100 yet, so. Maybe I would notice a little bit easier of a time, especially with Ironheart, if she was 100. But, you know, if you are not like to the moon on every single character, then I think having a skirmisher ISO is the way to go. Now, when it comes to actually playing them out on the nose themselves, this is back. We're back to the um, the playtest account here. I think where I've noticed some trouble is the node number two. And you've probably noticed this as well. Again, I don't have the gameplay footage for this right here right now. Uh, but particularly when you have the two absorbing man characters, and they're taunting right at the beginning and trying to land debuffs. But even, you know, against a lot of these other characters, when you go in with the uh, Ironheart special, I'm not always landing slow on all these characters. And if they have defense up, because sometimes Omega Red also spawn, he spawns with defense up, you know, then that becomes a little bit of an issue as well before it gets stripped. And then, of course, when we get to the boss, I actually find the boss node the easiest. I, I don't really find that a big problem, despite the enemies that are on there. It's actually node two, I think, is the hardest for the Pegasus lane. I don't think node one i i always sim node one actually i so sim node one i manual node two and then i manual the boss node just to be sure uh but pe th this lane is not that difficult i just want to let people aware or make people aware of Ironheart being a, a skirmisher i think that was the best there now let's move on to extreme x-men right this is another big one here too and i kind of want to share people with you my roster Right, and so this is an interesting one because I have two potential targets for uh, for Skirmisher ISO on this one. I used to run back when I was at lower stars, and I think Extreme X-Men are going to be the next uh, team that's going to be farmable, which is great, you know, because it's going to make a lot of things easier, especially when it comes to Sunspot and Nightcrawler landing their stuff. Um, but I actually do keep Nightcrawler permanently as a Skirmisher for raids. I do switch them for uh, things like Cosmic Crucible, things like that, back to Raider because it's, when you're playing against players, you know, they're not absurd on their resistance rates as raids are with their enemies. Uh, but Sunspot, I do use Skirmisher from time to time up until I got to five star G1895. I was using Skirmisher. So now I'm at six star, six yellow, six red G1895. And it's OK to run Striker at that point. 
But if you're anything probably four or under, honestly, I think that you might have a hard time landing your debuffs if you're not a skirmisher ISO. And so for a long time when this team first came out, I was using Sunspot as skirmisher. So just keep that in mind because he does have a lot of good debuffs that you want to make sure that you land. It's really important. Obviously, by having the striker ISO, it makes him build up his charges a lot faster with his basic. So whether you're simming or, or whether you're just playing it normally, like you're going to gain the charges a lot faster with striker ISO. But I also want to make sure I'm landing my debuffs because some of them are really important. And this is where I get to Nightcrawler because it is so so important that he does this i want to show you i want to show you the boss node you're probably well aware of this node the boss node for the mutant nodes have resistances out the wazoo i'm not even joking the bifrost characters have insane amounts of resistance and when you get to that second wave of the darkhold characters with wong and again morgan lefay scourging like every single lane um whenever she drops down her resistance rates are just through the roof so when i start this node off you know it's there's a possibility that Nightcrawler with his ultimate is not able to strip all of the Bifrost buffs. And, you know, most likely he is going to clear it off the other characters. Uh, but Bifrost, sometimes I've had it where it doesn't land. And then how many times have you played this and you've tried to land a debuff or an ability block on Morgan Le Fay and it just doesn't work, right? Like whether it's whether it's Sunspot, whether it's Gambit, whether it's Nightcrawler, like everyone's trying to get land an ability block or maybe even stun Wong or whatever the case is, right? And it's just not landing. And that's because their resistance rates are just absolutely insane. So I don't even bother when it comes to Gambit, right? I just, I, I do keep Nightcrawler as a skirmisher. I think that's really important because you're getting a lot of uh, bonus focus by having the skirmisher ISO. And, you know, some people don't really realize that. Yeah, I know it's only 50% extra focus typically. I think you also get T2 level three. Oh, no. Yeah, you gain an extra uh, for this attack. So it's like, you gain 50% focus in your stats and the raw stats, and then an additional 50% focus for that primary attack. So you're actually getting a bonus of 100%, and that's quite a bit. Like, that's going to make a pretty big difference when it comes to landing something or not, especially depending on, you know, how big you have a character built up. You know, and even with my Nightcrawler at 100, I will tell you that sometimes I do fail to do this. And so that just goes to show how crazy some of these raids are with the resistance rates. For Gambit, I'm still going to keep him as a raider. Cyclops still going to keep him as a raider. You know, if he lands his stuff, great. You know, it's like once in a blue moon. But I'm focusing on their damage rather than their debuff potential there. I, I don't really need Gambit's ability block as such to do that. But I think Nightcrawler and Sunspot are some of the most important characters uh, on this team, believe it or not, for the raids and also having Forge just so they survive. But that's not skirmisher related. So moving on from Extreme X-Men, we do have Bio and Hive Mind. Now, this one, I I actually do not use that many skirmishers anymore. I used to actually use skirmisher on Carnage, but I've kind of switched to using striker because of the other characters going first and landing vulnerabilities before uh, Carnage goes like Boy Knight will go before and then land vulnerabilities on characters, which allows me to uh, use my ultimate and hopefully knock somebody into the red. That's the goal. Uh, but I do keep Gwenum as a skirmisher because there's a lot of instances where it's really clutch if she lands her skills or doesn't, right? Like, I hope she doesn't, but <laughs> her special, for example, sorry, I got the cost. Landing her special is just so, so important, right? Like for the stuns, you have the two turn of stun. And if you miss this, depending on the target that you're, ha that you're trying to hit this on, like it could be pretty crippling if you don't do this in a lot of cases. And this is just outside of raids too, like a Cosmic Crucible and things like this. I always have her as a skirmisher just because it's really important that she lands this stun. <laughs> As far as the ultimate goes, you know, the clearing the barrier, luckily that can't get resisted. But when you're applying the offense down uh, to all enemies and also applying that, that extra stun here with the highest damage, that's really important to make sure that you have the focus to be able to do that because there have been times where I've had that resisted as well. It does get, an, believe it or not, even with the extra focus, I've had some of these things fail. Like it just goes to show the insane amount of um, the insane amount of resistances that the enemies have on a regular basis that yes, even when you do have extra focus from attacks, it's still not enough sometimes, right? Like, so I just want to make sure that this always lands, whatever it is, whether it's the ultimate, whether it's the special, even the basic, right? Cause this does not get uh, extra focus either, uh, for using this. Uh, so I want to make sure that all of these things, you know, do as much as I can, especially when it comes to controller type characters or debuff heavy characters. The other ones, I don't think it's as big of a deal. Uh, I, I've actually kind of tinkered with the idea of changing Red Goblin to a Skirmisher. And a lot of this is for the same reason that I talked about with Sunspot. 
just having lower star levels means lower focus stat because he's not fireable yet. So I'm still at five, five, you know, instead of seven, seven, or even with a diamond, you know, he's got a lot of debuffs as well, actually. And then some of these things can miss as well, uh, or resist rather, if you don't do it, same with this, the trauma does not apply all the time. It doesn't get extra focus. And in fact, I don't think his focus is really all that good. 22 for I think Gwenham has a lot higher. Of course I have a skirmisher. I so on her, but 22. Yeah. Like 48 K. So, Red Goblin doesn't actually have very good uh, focus, so I probably should be taking him to level 100, but I might want to consider that, like, depending on what things shape up, I guess, with the Incursion 3 raid when that does eventually come out, that might be a consideration because he has a lot of debuffs that are actually really important to the team that I want to make sure I land a little bit more. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any specific note advice at this point. Like, yeah, I've done it, and uh, maybe there are some things that are, I think it's the boss node. It's more of a pain in the ass than the other nodes. I haven't really had a lot of trouble with nodes one and two when you have the full hive mind actually geared up. But you'll find that there is a lot of characters, especially Observing Man and anyone like who has defense up on spawn. Luckily, there's no Morgan Le Fay on this one, though, so I don't really find it that big of a deal. A lot of the issues with this just surviving that first wave with Doctor Strange, I find. But other than that, it's not really the same sort of issues that you encounter in the other teams. And I know that uh, the Spider Society team is not fully out yet, but I've had my experience with them on the playtest server, and I want to share some of that with you guys. And I mean, this part's going to be pretty brief. Like, if you didn't catch my video that I did about uh, testing the Spider Society team in the raids, they're not that bad. But when it comes to landing their debuffs, it's so important that Penny Parker does it, right? I know she's not out yet, um, but when we do get there, like, it's going to be super important that she has a skirmisher ISO on her because... She is the one that's landing, especially with her ultimate skill, that's landing the uh, trauma, AOE trauma on everyone, and then ability block to all support enemies, but namely it's the trauma. This is such a big deal, and if she doesn't land this, it, it, it sucks, especially on the boss node, but it sucks all around to not land trauma because it's such a great debuff, right? And it, this one does not have additional focus on it either. So you know, it's really, really important that some characters, especially the debuff heavy characters, have uh, your skirmisher ISO for the other ones. It's not that big of a deal on this team, luckily, uh, especially for ghost spider. Cause you're going to have like possibly even diamonds on her anyways, because she's fully farmable. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, Peter is mostly a healer and, uh, Pavitra is m like mostly slows. Like I think on only slow slows is only debuff. So Penny Parker is definitely the one that's going to have a lot more, uh, issues if she doesn't land her stuff. So that's all five of the teams. And, and really the point of this video was just to showcase like how important the skirmisher ISO was. Yes, your ISO choices do matter, but I would say that at the higher range of rating, it makes a huge deal that your debuff characters have skirmisher and making sure that they're actually landing their stuff in the race that you're doing. And if you're still struggling after that, it kind of tells you that you probably need to gear them up a little bit higher or you need to level them up a little bit higher as well. You know, obviously there's only so far we can go with uh, 100 G18 but the funny thing that you say that is that, uh, well, these teams, especially with Spider Society, was benched at level, I think it was level 95, G18, 7 yellow, 7 red. So if they're still not landing their stuff, it's because you don't have them at 7 yellow, 7 red. It means that you need to get spending. No, I'm just kidding. But hopefully that uh, <laughs> some of this does help you all if you've had some issues with that. And I just wanted to do this video for everyone uh, because I wanted to share kind of the thoughts that I had with regards to raid teams. So that's going to be the end of this video, everyone. And until next time, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.